Hello, my name is Graham, and today I'm going to be looking at how to play Call of Cthulhu online using Roll20. We've already done a basic player's guide, and this is the follow-up basic uh, keeper's guide. Uh, how to get started on um, Roll20 uh, and get all your sort of ducks in a row, as it were, to set up and run a game. We're going to be focusing mainly on uh, the, the free adventures that are offered by Chaosium uh, and set up by Roll20. Uh, there's two which are free. There's the Call of Cthulhu Quick uh, Start Rolls, which uh, features uh, The Haunting, a classic scenario which is very, very popular. And we've also got a, a free shorter um, intro scenario, which is about, uh, I'd say, about two hours long uh, to play. And uh, it's the Lightless Beacon, and it's a, it was released for a uh, free RPG a day, I think. Uh, there are other options available to you. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll see a couple of them. Dead Man Stomp and Edge of Darkness, part of the starter set module. These are uh, paid modules, uh, along with the Chaosium's Compendium uh, Cooper's Rulebook, uh, which you can buy as well. But we're mostly going to be looking at these two. Uh, in fact, we're going to be looking at uh, the haunting. So you want to uh, go over here and sign up if you haven't already and get yourself a free account. Uh, just log in and anyone that's been online since 1990 uh, knows how to do that by now. And then you want to head over here to my game, well, to games. Uh, this tab will come down and you want to go to uh, create new game and you'll be taken to this page we're looking at now. Here on the left, we can see basic uh, sort of uh, look at uh, setting up a custom game um, and you can select your, your sheet uh, from the, the many, many systems that are played on uh, Roll20. Uh, you can see that uh, the Chaosium has got uh, set up here, so you click on that and you'll bring up uh, the, the Roll20 uh, system. However, we're going to be clicking on this uh, over on the right hand side, which is uh, the, the preloaded module. And uh, by doing that, it shows you what you get in the module here, uh, over on this side, um, and it, on, uh, it shows you the, the sheet which we'll be using. So this is the collaboration sheets uh, between Chaosium and Roll20. There is also the, the community sheets uh, which are down here under basic role playing. If you prefer these, uh, click on the Call of Cthulhu 7th edition and you'll bring up the, these sheets. These sheets are more uh, favourable for me because I've been using them for a long time, but uh, some people uh, seem to like the, the, the Chaosium's uh, version, even though it is a little bit more clunky. So, uh, we want to use this for the, the, the pre-loaded um, module anyway, because it's set up with uh, skills and all that jazz. Uh, you want to stick in a, a name, uh, let's call it Haunting Quick Start, and uh, you're ready to rock and roll. You can put in some tags if you want, it's up to you, it's just for finding your games, uh, specific game within your games, uh, if you have a lot of them already. So uh, then you're just going to click uh, create game. Alrighty then, uh, you'll be brought to this page here which is called the games detail page and we've got a few options here to fill in before we do anything else. First of all, uh, I'm going to take you down here to look at uh, playing. Um, this is uh, essentially the, the tag you're going to be using to be added to the correct list um, so the, the players can find you. You want to come down here to call Cthulhu any edition, click on that and that's that solved. Next one is uh, when will the next bit game be? Uh, I've already set up, uh, it's going to be in two weeks time. If you want to change this, you click on it, you get a drop down calendar and you can select whichever time and date you want. This is a um, specific date to you. Uh, the, the players viewing it will see a specific date to their time zone. Uh, so they'll always uh, know when the game will be and there's no calculating the, the UTC or like uh, GMT. Or anything like that it will just be automatically done for you which is very very handy below that uh, there's a, a, a space to put a blurb uh, about your game uh, i've already set up this is the basic uh, way i do it i show uh, the name the length of the game the, the system being played and the era and uh, a small blurb about the the hook uh, that goes in there as well and below that you can add um if the players want to create their own character, they can. Uh, they must have a, a supernatural interest uh, to invest to be investigating. It's kind of like the, the hook in. You can do that so that the player you, you foist the, the hook onto the players rather than having to do it yourself. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a headache uh, removed from you if you want that. Then there's a bit you can put in about yourself if you wish uh, down there as well. 
Now, some things you need to know about this. Uh, don't just throw in one line of text and uh, expect people to join your game. It shows you're not uh, interested and you're just doing it uh, off the cuff and you might not even show up because hell, you couldn't even be arsed to fill in like a paragraph or two uh, about the game you'll be playing. I'd say ideally you want to put in about um, 15 to 30 seconds worth of reading, uh, no more, no less. Because if you put in more, then it's just a chore and the people you're going to get are fastidious and uh, on the other end of the scale from people who just don't care. Uh, there's a nice happy medium to be found. Any players that join the game will be put over here uh, and you can also click this button and you'll get a nice little box and you can give people a link directly to send players to your game. You don't really need uh, anything else here. Um, there's a little uh, forum down here uh, for threads that you can add uh, things like your Discord uh, links to if you want to use Discord. Uh, and other than that, uh, that's most of the settings uh, shown here. The next thing I want to uh, talk about is the settings. Uh, this is how you delete your game uh, and clear the chat logs. You don't really need to touch anything here. Uh, and uh, for just the basics, you want to leave well alone. Contents is the same. This is not much of a concern for you right now. The big button here we want to talk about is looking for uh, players, which is disabled right now. If we click on that will be taken to the um, the form to fill in to be listed. So if we click on this button, we go to manage listings uh, and it should load uh, this little form here, uh, which is how you're going to get players to apply to your game and tell them what you're specifically looking for. This uh, listing is not shown yet because we've got some things to uh, fill out and I've disabled the listing. It'll show you when the game is going to be uh, played, the edition. Uh, this is the total players needed. Uh, you need to click on this, it's not obvious that uh, sometimes players get tripped up here uh, that you need to click here because it doesn't look like it's a, a box you can put something in. But you need to put in the total number of players including yourself, so if you want five players you want to put six in here and click save and then go down to uh, here. You're going to ignore this because it's going to be set up for role play straight away anyway and uh, move on to the next box. It's uh, a one only game the hunting can be run into two, but usually it's a, a sort of one and done scenario. Below that, uh, you can choose to voice or voice and video or text only. Never seen anyone use te text only, mostly all only voice only. You can go for video, but it's another technical um, thing to go wrong. Uh, and generally um, staring at people's faces is just, you know, it doesn't really add anything unless you're specifically looking to play with friends perhaps. Below that you've got uh, primary language you want to play then. Uh, it's default to English but there are plenty of options. Um, most of the games are in English though, uh, so be aware of that. Um, you've got some check boxes down here to look at next. Um, you want to tick this uh, and welcome new players, always looking for new players to, to come into the, the hobby. And um, Roll20 is quite easy for players to, to grasp. I always put on mature content because I want to play with over 18s and my games can be a little bit more graphic than usual. Um, so that's just a fair warning uh, to players. Below that you have pay for play. Uh, this is for uh, the GMs that decide that uh, they're going to foist a fee onto their players and uh, look for some sort of um, a more professional route in, in playing. There's a lot of people that do this for D&D, not so many for Call of Cthulhu. Uh, but it is an option if you want to pay for a professional or more professional GM. Uh, you can look for the, the red pay for play tag. Now, uh, there's this button here. Uh, this is the pickup game. Click this is uh, spelling Doom for any of your games. Anyone can automatically join. You can get trolls, uh, just people who have no idea what they're doing, um, people who don't know what your game is and just different messing around. Um, all sorts of rubbish uh, players will join your game and uh, you'll basically just be a massive shit show. Do not click this button on any other circumstances other than curiosity and even then. So you want to get rid of that and never talk about it again. Uh, below it uh, you have your text blurb again. Uh, you just leave that as is because you've already filled that out. And uh, then it shows you your players underneath and uh, the listing discussion. Here I have set up a um, discussion. Uh, apply here please, should be uh, that the players will click on this and they'll see my blurb that I want players to read and then fill out. This just goes over some basic rules, uh, mind your manners and tone and uh, what I want the, the players to actually uh, fill out beneath. Name, age, uh, well handle in age really, um, time zone, uh, what experience of role playing, favourite horror movies and what Lovecraft have you read. 
Most of these answers mean nothing, uh, other than the fact I want them to give me a unique answer, which is not uh, monosyllabic, uh, so I know that they have a pulse, and they're going to show up. Usually, um, you'll either get people who will give you very short answers or um, very, very, very long answers. The very long answered ones are uh, hit or miss. Uh, you can get good players with that. Um, but uh, sometimes they're just people who uh, are very restrictive in how they see they should be playing and don't want anyone to mess or kill their character. That is uh, how you, they usually go. And uh, sometimes you'll get players who will completely ignore this and give you canned responses elsewhere. They'll just post their own thing, throw in their canned response and run away. Just ignore them. They haven't listened to what you want and uh, they're not uh, useful as players uh, because if they can't listen, then hey, why are you bothering? And that is how to set up your game for um, adding to the, the list. Uh, if you want to see your game, you go to uh, Join Game and you'll be brought up with all the, the games on the, the actual server. The loads, there we go. Uh, this is basically all the games. Uh, you're gonna have to filter out and go down to Call of Cthulhu. There we are. Uh, click on that, uh, show me your contents because that's what we put on, and find games. If you get um, messages or people submitting, you'll get a, a message up here and you'll get an email in a, a couple of hours as well. Uh, just to prompt you to, to go and check out the, the players applying for your games. And that's pretty much all you need to know about that. So you click on the find button and uh, you find all the, the games which are listed for uh, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, they come up here, usually have a page, um, sometimes two, uh, but mostly one. If you click on a game, this is one of my other games, Deadlight, uh, which I'm going to be running in a couple of days time. Uh, you click on your own game, you'll bring up this page here. And you can see that um, when you click on the, the application forms, uh, you can see that I've invited this player to the game, so they get this tag. And players I haven't invited to the game get the invite game. So you just click that if you want to invite them to the game. And uh, that's pretty much how you do that. Uh, they'll be added to this slot here. So now we're going to go in and have a look at the game itself. And uh, we just have to find the game. Uh, if you want to do that and you're lost, go up to games again. Uh, go to my games or you should see it along here if it was the last game you had selected uh, and you'll find it uh, and you'll find your way back to the detail page. So once you click uh, do all that uh, you press launch and uh, the game will load. This is again the quick start guide uh, for Call of Cthulhu as well as the hunting scenario. So uh, if you've been a player before you'll notice we've got some new options here which you don't have as a player. Uh, we'll get to all of them in time, uh, but one of the main ones uh, I want to start with is this little blue tag here, which is page tool bar. Click on that, you get a drop down for um, different uh, options uh, to go to different pages. Uh, just like a website, uh, you can change the different page uh, that the, the players see or you can, only, you can see yourself. To move the players, you need to grab this little ribbon here and drag it across uh, to the different page and then you can go there yourself uh, and see what they see or vice versa. A clever little trick you can do is you can actually, if you have another player in here, I don't have anyone to show you, but to, this token here is you, uh, your players will be listed along next to you. You can actually grab the player and drag them onto the, the tab uh, up here to, to split the party uh, and just to move them back you just grab the icon that will be put here and put it back into the, the ribbon to join them again. That way you can split um, one party member off to a different page and uh, have the party um, go in different directions or do different things. Okay, so now we know what the tabs are and the pages, um, we can move on to the tokens and the, the objects uh, layer. This layer is uh, where you will be most active. Uh, I've moved over to the, the house uh, so we can play with the tokens. Uh, the uh, the Roll20 team have set up the tokens to be, I've set up the tokens to use dynamic lighting, as you can see here. Uh, the, the lighting um, changes when the, the, the token is moved around the house. Uh, this is pretty good. Some people like it, some people don't. I don't tend to use it because uh, sometimes it can be frustrating for the player not to see uh, other parts of the map uh, once they move on. For example, if you move here, now you can't see down into the living room. 
Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, Dean Deers tend to use it uh, voraciously, um, and I think all of the other players will, will pick up it eventually uh, a little bit more, but for now, uh, most people don't use it. Okay, so tokens can only be accessed if you have this layer on. If you have the map layer on, uh, the token cannot be accessed, you can only move the background. So make sure you have it selected. Uh, when you want to, to manipulate these. The players can only use, uh, can only be on the uh, object layer uh, and token layer. Uh, they can't be on the other two layers. So they can only ever uh, use these tokens if you've given them access. This is one of the problems with uh, tokens to wrap, wrap your hand, head around uh, for online play. Uh, you have to set these up uh, specifically to players and you can do that by clicking this cog and going down to here and it says control by all players uh, which I set up earlier uh, you can remove that and give it to a specific player if you want uh, or uh, like I did you can use uh, all players if you don't do that uh, they won't be able to see what this token sees and it will be black them uh, if you need to split the party right click on it uh, go to copy and then just uh, right click again on the page and put the paste and you'll get a second map, a second token on the map. Again, make sure you have um, all players um, activated for, for the control. It does mean the players will be able to move these around. Um, so all of that, uh, you can see like uh, numbers and uh, lettering on the, the map, uh, giving away exactly what things are. The players cannot see these things. They're on the GM overlay. Uh, if you click on this, uh, you'll access them and then you can move them about and you can't touch the, the tokens. The other things you can do here is you can hide tokens on this layer. Um, this token and this token, the rats in the wall and Mr. Corbett himself are on the GM layer. That's why they're uh, transparent. To change the transparency, you come down to here and you can make it brighter or uh, a lower faint. Uh, your preference uh, on that. To change a token onto a different layer, just right click it, uh, go to layer and now you have access to all three layers. It'll highlight which layer it's on. This one's on the GM layer. And we want to move it to the token layer and boom uh, because it's set up for um, dynamic lighting uh, it will illuminate this area however uh, the players cannot see this and as you can see uh, here we can only access the, the writing and we cannot pick up Corbin's token uh, sometimes this will, will confuse you because uh, you're not expecting it uh, you think you're on a different layer uh, just make sure you're on the object layer and you can get to the token you've moved so the players cannot see this um, area because this is not set up again as a player token. This one here is actually attached to a sheet turned by character settings. Uh, most of the enemies uh, in pre-gen uh, games will come like this. And uh, if you ever delete this um, character from the, the game, um, say you lose that token by mistake, you delete it by accident. If you go to your journal and move down to Mr. Corbett, uh, hover over his name, right, uh, sorry, left click and hold and drag him back onto the map. There you go, he's back again. And uh, all his stats uh, will be uh, in there as well. So if you click on his character sheet, uh, you'll see his token. Uh, you go to his character sheet and then you can start rolling uh, for his, um, well, uh, skills. And you've got the bio there as well. So uh, this sheet's um, set up quite differently from the, the other ones uh, and uh, it takes a, a little bit of time to, to get used to it but I, I think they've changed it slightly now so it's a, a little bit more in keeping with just uh, press a button and roll. Uh, you can click on uh, Whisper to Keeper. Uh, you don't need to this because you are the Keeper uh, but players when they get this they can whisper to you a, a roll so no other player can see it. It can be uh, Sort of handy. If you want to edit any of this, just click on edit mode and you can now edit uh, the, the skills uh, even though it's a pre-gen model. Pretty simple stuff. The other thing under this uh, tab is dynamic lighting. Uh, if you click on this, you'll get to create the dynamic lighting yourself. It's already set up for you here. Uh, you can see the, the, the blue is uh, a blocker that restricts sight and uh, these uh, here are the doors, uh, the orange um, for uh, players to move through. Uh, again, you don't need to touch this. You can play around with it if you want to see how it works, but uh, for the pre-gen and just for a, a basic guide, um, just be aware this is what that is and you don't need to touch it as it's already set up. So just head back to the object and token layer. 
Under this, uh, you have the, the draw tool, fairly basic, uh, the zoom in tool, uh, the measuring tool, and then you have uh, fog of war uh, here. Fog of war is very like uh, dynamic lighting, except it's a, a lot more uh, basic. Um, I can show you it working here if we go back to the, the splash page and um, you can go up to here, go back to your page toolbar and click on this little icon here for the page you want to put Fog of War on for and you can just enable it there like that. Uh, click OK and it will go dark. Shut that and we can go back to our little tool here. Uh, click on Reveal Areas and you can drag out big yellow boxes and it will reveal pieces of it. If you don't like the dynamic lighting, you can turn on the fog of war instead and just do it this old fashioned way. Uh, dead easy. And you can also uh, hide again uh, parts of the map or reset the fog of war completely like that. Uh, to turn it off, um, you can just uh, you know uh, go back up here, click on the tog and uh, take that off again and save. It's off. Not a problem. Dead, dead simple. Under this, you have uh, the turn order. Um, this is generally not used in Call of Cthulhu very much, even though um, we've started to use macros to uh, throw decks into here, uh, just as a, a simple, quick way of doing it. One of the advantages of playing online is a lot of the calculation and drudgery um, of uh, keeping sheets uh, managed uh, is done for you. Uh, but if you want to add anything to this, uh, click this little icon here and you can add uh, the, the number you want. Again, you don't really need this, but it is here if you want to use it. And then you just have the roller and uh, you have the... So, the next thing you want to look at is uh, over here on the top right hand side. You want to uh, be able to get familiar with a few new icons here that the players don't have. First of all, uh, your chat window, dead simple. Uh, it's just the same as any other chat. Uh, but then we have Art Library. This is all your assets that you've bought on the, the marketplace uh, or that you've um, uploaded to the actual um, game. Because we're using the pregen, this doesn't really matter to you too much here. Uh, and we can move on to the journal. The journal is a comprehensive breakdown of the game uh, for you, uh, done in handouts and uh, in uh, compendium sort of style uh, sort of snippets that have been pulled straight from the uh, quick guide. The quick guide wasn't designed to be played online and uh, it's uh, a little bit cut and paste and basic uh, compared to say a D&D &D module which will be highly tuned for a online environment um, which kind of gives you apples and oranges uh, when it comes to comparing the two. Remember that Call of Cthulhu is a fairly uh, theatre of the mind game and uh, you don't need a lot to actually play it, but uh, it's it's not the, the best presented. So uh, what do we have here? We've got the quick um, guide rules. So we've got sanity, we've got the combat, which comes up uh, in these little boxes like this. Now, if you click on edit on any of these, um, you'll be given some options here to, uh, well, edit the, the actual uh, text itself. But what we're really looking for is these two options here, in player's journal and can be edited by. We want to turn uh, things like uh, the system rules uh, onto players by clicking uh, all players or you can click on a certain player, only I'm in the game so. Um, but all players for simple things like this and then click save and now everyone can see that and you can see a little blue um, icons uh, dots uh, popped up against the, the combat because I've shown that to everyone. Another way to do that quickly is this show button, uh, just click uh, show to players and uh, you'll see the same thing happens here. Uh, to show to only one player you have to click on edit though and uh, come into here. Uh, you can also do the same with edits, uh, so if you want the player to be able to edit it uh, you can give them access uh, to that as well. So to that end you can come up here to this little add button and click on that and you can add new characters. You're going to have to do this uh, for the players uh, that join your game and uh, you'd spawn a new one for each player. Uh, you get some basic options here. Uh, they can add uh, avatars and uh, all that stuff. Uh, what you need to do for them uh, is go to these two uh, controls again and uh, give it to the actual player, uh, put it in their journal. If you put uh, the catch sheet in all players journal, um, and save, uh, they'll only be able to see the bio information here, at the front here. And of course the, the GM's uh, notes can only be seen by the GM. Uh, only the players uh, 
have access to the sheet um, editing uh, can actually see the, the character sheet itself. So you have to come in here and give that to a player. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much how that works. Just save and they have access to this now. Uh, the Roll20 sheets uh, work much like the uh, Compendium sheets. Uh, you basically just uh, select a roll and uh, boom, uh, it turns up in the, the, the chat. Uh, not a problem at all. Uh, you have uh, some options here uh, along the, the base or the middle point of the, the sheet. Uh, if you want to look at your combat attributes and weapons, uh, you can add stuff here if you go to the edit mode. Click that and uh, then click the, the plus button. You can then type in a name, uh, attach it to a skill you want to use, say Brawl. Uh, let's call it Fists. And uh, the damage for that is uh, 1d4. Uh, sorry, 1d3. And uh, yeah, uh, you can uh, stick that in there and lock it again. And now if you click that, it comes up down here. See that? And that's all good. Uh, you've got uh, your backstory uh, that you can just edit by clicking the little um, icon here to, to access it. And uh, you can actually spawn it by uh, clicking the, the little uh, speech bubble so you can tell people uh, about your backstory. That's uh, quite a nice little feature. Skills. Uh, spells are much like combat. You can, uh, again, go back into edit mode and add a skill uh, that's... Uh, goes in here and uh, it's all good and possessions are your spending level cash and your assets all that good stuff and then you've got some um, options for calculating and uh, NPCs and all that good stuff so uh, other than that the only other thing to go over is music uh, this is your jukebox and uh, you can do a lot of fancy stuff on uh, Roll20 with music uh, it's quite comprehensive if you click on audio, uh, it'll bring up your lists uh, of all your uploaded audio uh, or you'll get access to free uh, tracks. If you go to tracks over here, uh, you'll have tabletop audio, battle bard and in, uh, which is uh, Kevin McLeod. Everyone knows Kevin McLeod. He gives free music to just about every YouTube channel that's ever existed uh, using his music. Um, but uh, tabletop audio has some very, very nice uh, Call of Cthulhu music uh, to set that tone. Um, there's uh, some some pretty uh, classic ones which I use all the time, like uh, the the asylum and the the rain and uh, the speakeasies and stuff like that. It's all good stuff. If you want to add any of these to the game, just click on the add, uh, go to add to game, and it'll appear over here uh, in this. Uh, I'm going to add a few of them just to to show you um, a couple of things. Let's add uh, just a. Uh, couple more things like here. Okay. So a random selection of stuff, not the, the, the best, all right. Um but uh what we can do here is we can we can show you how this kind of works. You can play the audio like that and it'll just come on. Pretty simple. However you want to click on this little button loop so it'll actually loop round and you can control the, the, the volume here and here. You also have a master volume and the, the little cog icon at the top um, which you can slide up and down. This affects the, 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 the volume which will go to the players and they do have their own master to, to change it as well but uh, just to you know uh, say that you can you can play about with it uh, in lots of places. Now to move files uh, and music this also works for uh, files and the handouts and uh, players sheets. Uh, you want to uh, grab these little three lines here and hold down the left mouse button and you can drag them uh, into folders and files and stuff like that. Uh, don't grab the name. Uh, if you grab the name you'll start editing the name and you don't want that uh, to happen because uh, you'll get stuck and things like that. If you want to de delete them you can right click on them and delete the item or you can put fade in fade out if you want the start and the end of the, the song to, to fade in and fade out. Now, that's all good and well said. Uh, you can also uh, add um, folders. Uh, add. Okay. 
you add a, a new playlist, uh, you grab it here and you can throw it into the playlist. It's a little bit tricky sometimes to do that. Uh, just grab the three lines and you can throw them into the, the playlist or you can generate new playlists uh, from your lists. Uh, if you go to playlists here, you'll see I've got one set up for aliens, I've got a dance hall um, set up, got storm set up, uh, tension uh, sort of tracks, uh, abomination noises, um, sounds of war, sadness, and you can import uh, all of these to, to one game as well and you'll get the, all the tracks in the, the playlist like that. Uh, and if you want to get rid of this, you just uh, delete the, the folder like that. So what benefits uh, to putting them into a playlist? If you uh, click off these and click that, uh, with the playlist bu play button instead of the files, you'll play them all in order. So when one of them ends, uh, the, the other one will, will come on and uh, it'll go down the list and, and recycle if you put on uh, the, the right thing here. Uh, you can put on cycle here. You can also have them play randomly, shuffle, or you can have them play all at the same time. This is hugely handy um, for uh, mixing tracks like uh, sound effects like rain into uh, a, a more melancholy sort of background music and things like that. And you can really go into to depth and tweak it uh, quite a lot, like uh, putting monster music and that sort of thing. It's quite nice in what you can do. One more thing you can do with music is if you go back up here to the page toolbar, pull this down and uh, click on the page setting, you can actually go down here to uh, the bottom um, option, play on load. So if you want to click on that and you can either click uh, the playlist we have, which is there, we haven't named it so it's just blank, uh, or if you want to stick on uh, one of the, the tracks and click OK. If you move the players uh, away from that page and you move it back again, this track will now automatically start playing. Um, so it takes some of that hassle away from you uh, when, when you're doing that. Okay. So it's, uh, it's really nice and it's one of the major features of Roll20 which I uh, kind of favour it for. Uh, it just gives you that sort of ability to be very slick uh, with your um, atmospheres when you're, you're moving scene. And uh, it can really give a, a real bump into the, the sort of tension and uh, depth of mood uh, to the actual game itself. And I would say it's a, a bigger benefit than you'd get on um, playing in on a table where you'd have to click a but few buttons and mess around with your laptop and that sort of thing. So that is pretty much all you need to know about being a keeper uh, with the, the basics uh, of uh, using uh, the free modules. Uh, there's the other free modules as well. Uh, so the um, Lightless Beacon is a little bit better laid out and a little bit more up to date and posh looking than this. This is uh, quite rough. I mean, the, the scenario has been about for a, a while now and it, it's a little bit tired. But it does what you need to do and it's all good. So if you have any questions, uh, just leave them in the comments below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. And uh, I'll do a more comprehensive video about how to set up your own custom game uh, rather than uh, using a, a pre-module uh, like this. Uh, so uh, thanks for listening and I'll see you another time.